Here we are, back again. Here we are, Telefrain. We have two goals today. One is to find Polythrene so that we don't get murdered by pirate, well, like criminal thugs. And the other one is to dump this Sphinx Stone that's in our hold and taking up buttloads of space. Because if we don't, we'll never have room to do anything ever again. We have a thousand Echoes that don't really belong to us, and which we need at Polythreme. So... I'm a little nervous. I would have preferred to do one trip to Adam's Way to dump this Phoenix Stone, and then another one to get to Polythreme, because the problem is, we don't know where either of those places are. Technically, we know Adam's Way is uh, essentially in the middle. It's like, it's one of these two areas. I think the further one. Uh, <laughs> nervous laughter. So we can just go straight southeast and see what we can see. It is not... I forget where Polythreme is. I think it's Chunklet is like this area. So we have to go that way, that way, that way. Or the alternate way around. Uh, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll, so I'll head east to Godfall. I'm not sure I should be messing around trying to fill in the map, but I'd like to fill in those. Head to Godfall. And then it's in this vicinity that Polythreme might be found. I know that at one point when we were boating around this area, we got the the warning that Polythreme was in the vicinity. So... I can hope. But it's certainly not closer than, like, here, I don't think. So it has to, so if it's not immediately next to like Godfall, if it's not like here, then we're gonna have a problem. Because it can be anywhere. So this might be a time where, you know, I'll do my best and then we'll have to reload so that I don't die. Man, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. I would normally do like 25 to be able to do that. And I don't have that amount with me. Don't feed the crew, we're, we're here. Oy. All right, so I'm going to sell my candle to make as much space to get more supplies. Gonna sell that. I love that you could take Zoop all the way over here and you would sell it for the price that you bought it at, so it's a net loss on account of uh, the fuel that you have to spend. It, it's like uh, it's just so so clearly they went they worked hard to make it so that you could not make a profit in this game, and it annoys me. So we have fuel. Okay. I think that's how we're going to do it. Let us begin. So I'm going to go east first, I think. Because if we get 
because we'll lose fuel and supplies along the way, which means that there will be room for whatever the heck is waiting for us at Polythene. Oh, I think it said. I think it said souls. So we'll go. I'm not sure it's a good idea to stop for port reports with how little fuel and supply I have, but we will see. I do like the idea, like that's part of why I did it with the blind bruiser, because a smart person would have refused from the get-go, because it's not, I mean we were desperate for money, but we could have survived without it. But it's fun to get into these sort of challenges where it's like you have to go to these places because the next time you dock in Fallen London, a bunch of bruisers are going to kill you if you don't have what the what what the uh, blind bruiser is looking for. So it's just a teensy bit exciting. Knowing that you're risking your butt. Alright, so here we won't be able to buy more Sphinx Stone, and thank goodness, because we're already full up. We have enough that we could probably rebuild this Sphinx from scratch. Alright. What? You can still do it? Oh, because I haven't submitted it. That's why. Wait. Guess who? Okay. So I didn't submit my port reports. So, I'm wondering if I should reload and dump those, but the problem is, I don't have room for the supplies that I will get, so it'll be a huge waste. Man, the Sphinx Stone really messed me up. I'm not going to go back. I'm going to try and... I'm going to keep going east. We'll hope for the best. Time to play with you. <sighs> Hold on. Yeah, it does fill fill up the cargo. Okay. All right, we'll try this. Oh. Last two ordinary history for Athenor stove. Roasting and refinement. Well, there's a good chance I'll have to reload anyway, so whatever, to be honest. Okay. 
And it is a thought, if I find Polythreme fast enough and get back to London, I can do the Sphinx Stone on another trip, maybe, hopefully. Four. Continue. Hold thirty seven out of forty. We don't we don't need supplies really at this moment of time. We're going to go east, and we're going to hope for the best <laughs> here in the Untersee, where things always go well. It's that Alcius class Corvette again. Whoever they are. I think it might be the pirate poet. Uh. Can you go fight this other thing maybe? Good. What is this? Come on. There we go. Tides of appetite. And what's what's this place? Oh, maybe it's an underwater place. Maybe that's what these are. this place <gasps> nice forlorn obey got some miserable sounding place names commingle nice oh boy I don't need the lights when I'm close to an island But see, it's always, it's never the angle that you want for stepping into a place. Whew. So here we are. Nice. The king with a hundred hearts rules from his palace above the city. He has never seen. He makes no treaties with other lands, but there's unrest in the air. The clay men you speak to are obedient and humble, but they speak nervously of those who are not. The maimed, the rebellious. The unfinished. Okay. A great temple had been wounded. It will be years in the dying. It groans and shivers, and the clay men avoid the place out of fear and respect. But you meet one of their number in the shattered chamber where the altar once stood. What souls are these? The clay man swallows the coins in handfuls. For safety, not out of appetite, you assume. And hands you a crate of whispering souls. Human? The souls back home were all but silent. Perhaps these are the souls of chairs, hats, swords. That's polythrene for you. Intriguing. How much cargo space do I have? 
Six. I have exactly six. So I could do it. Hmm. <laughs> no, he won't see you. He will look at your little idol, though. I do like that. Ooh. So I can only have seven folk, but iron plus five, engine power, 300, so I won't, so I can do this, or I can make money. I might do that. Yeah, unless one turns out to be an unfinished man. I might do this. Clay. I do this treat this trio of clay stokers will reduce crew requirements but also crew capacity and will slightly increase engine power. They are fitted to an auxiliary slot when they are not in use. They will stand patiently hands by the size, flat gray right <laughs> flat gray eyes unreadable. One will say sometimes, I like it when it is quiet. These folks are, to my mind, so definitely partially inspired by Terry Pratchett golems. I love them. So, 300. I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. And, uh, I don't think this place is too far from fallen London. So, it'll be... Yeah, I think I may. Gasp. The one thing is this this is going to be an interesting challenge because of uh, if, if people come to try and take it, uh, it will be bad. But there's not much I can do about that at this moment in time. Wait, oh, this doesn't cost money? Oh. Okay. Uh, sure. This will probably be a bad idea. Each one lies down in its appointed position next to the other. Nestled snugly, head by foot. We are from London, one explains to you. Nice. I am so worried. Okay. So. Here's the thing. I am so tempted, but I only have seven supplies. I'm not... Yeah, I'm just not going to make it. it. It'll take like six just to get down here, won't it? Yeah, I'm going to be close. I'm going to have to get to Mutton Island and hope I can afford something. Maybe. Okay. Well, yeah, so we'll go back. We'll go back to Fallen London. It's the best we can do. I hope that... Pirate, whoever the Alcius class vessel doesn't show up. Shifting movement. All we can do is our best.
Oh dear. Okay. Wow. Nice little bowls of goo grapes. Nice. Well, we're going to have to spend some favor to heal the ship when we give into port. Just how it be, I suppose. Do we have a mutton iron uh, island report currently? I don't know what it looks like. So we don't currently have one. Oh, we'll get to see the ass of the Sphinx for once. skip Mutton Island because we're close to running out. Oh, so close to... I'll do it. Worst comes to worst, I'll purchase something here. Because I think you can purchase some here. If I can't purchase some here, we're going to have an issue. Who? Okay. story for you. I don't have a Z story. Oh no. This story has a wedding full of murders and a leafless forest and a vast serpent which eats souls, the tail runs on and on like the serpent, till you're lost in the dizzy toils of its sinister ships and its glamorous corpses. You nod awake. He's gone, but not, it seems, before searching your pockets for small change. <sighs> that monster. I think that's about all I can do except get this dude. Uh, fine. Jumps down from your arms and disappears into the darkness of the ship. An hour later, five brutally executed rats are found on the foredeck. Yeah. Shouldn't have, probably, but oh well. Yeah. Oh 
Let's see. Okay. So we're almost there. I don't know which is the best way around. I'll just go this way. Okay, a little crablet. So close. All right, we're gonna make it. Oh, thank goodness. That was so lucky to find Polythreme. I genuinely didn't think it was going to happen. Whew, welcome home. You may ask how it is I am here to meet you, and I may remark that we have eyes in the waste and eyes in the hill. In fact, we have more eyes than a not oracle, and they're all glad to see you. And, of course, your cargo. Thank goodness, I thought I was going to have to go through the revenuers or whatever the guards are that go through your ship. Whew. Oh, very good, very good. Please accept this small token of my thanks, and please also accept my thanks, and my patrons' thanks, which we, being persons of honor, what understands the true nature of dealings is much more important. Still, spending money is always good, isn't it? And a captain must eat, and so must a ship, which is why if you look under the pier there, you will find a few helpful contributions of fuel and so forth. Okay. Phew. What's my hold like? Okay, so I have room for now on account of having nothing. Uh, okay. So first of all, let's sell these, let's deliver these clay people. That's where they want to be, or at least where they're supposed to be. Sure, one by one they rise uncomplainingly with no trace of stiffness or discomfort from the long voyage. The deck resounds beneath their heavy tread. A shroom yard manager waits on deck, tapping her foot on dock. About time, she says. Here's your payment. Come along now, you. There's a good construct. Goodness. So, what's here? Anything? Nothing. Okay. So, I think my hold, I have enough that I can start getting stuff. So I'm going to do the port reports and then heal the ship. All right, so I'm just going to go through these, Wither, Abbey Rock. <laughs> Are you quite certain this is the report you wish to make? So be it. Chapel of Whites. Ooh, -hoo. if that is experts, I'd be delivering my own coal. So, we're pretty full. We need several more supplies, but that's something. All right, a new supply. Do I have a restful night currently? I have a free evening. Doesn't look like it. Who does await my attention? Oh. Let's. 
something. Oh well. Yeah, so it's what? So 7 times 70 equals 490. So I could rush up there. But first, I really, because I wouldn't even have room for them as it currently stands. So I think we have to go to Adam's Way first. Okay, first of all, I'm going to save. We're going to go to the shops. Is there anything I can be purchasing? How much is the next ship again? See, there's this. There's this. So we have... What? A worse hull? Worse hull? A worse hold capacity? Fewer quarters? What's the point of this ship? This is garbage. Good lord. I wasted my time even looking at that. So this is the one. I I got it and put the best engine I could find on it. <laughs> uh, just because it has a huge hold capacity. So that's how I was slowly trying to make money. And uh, it didn't, it wasn't going very well, frankly. Yeah, these, I'm not going to have that money anytime soon. So, at best, is maybe this one, which has a much better hull, has all that. The only thing is 4,000 echoes. I've never had 4,000 echoes. Has the same hold capacity too, but this one depresses me. This one feels like a joke that it actually costs more. Okay. All right, so. Um, all right. Is it here? No. So let's go to the dry dock. We're not going to do this because this is a bad choice. That's also a bad choice. This is all right, but it costs money. Here, this one, I'm sure, like I think I've said before, this is probably a, a waste as well. But I have the money, and uh, it only takes a certain amount of favor. So I will do that. So now we're full. Now we're down to 16, but that should still be fine. The worst time is uh, one of my first captains is I I healed my ship and I used it to buy fuel and all of a sudden I couldn't go talk to my friend the, the admiral anymore because I used up all the favor. So I had to go discover more islands before I was allowed to talk to him again. It was very sad. Okay. 
So, so that's that. I can't really, I guess I could like buy, nope, I can't even afford any of these because I would have to jettison cargo or sell something first before I could bring it on. But even if I could, it would have to be 400. So it would have to be this. And mirrors plus one, I'm not sure that it's worth that, especially when mirrors is my best quality. Probably a natural philosopher isn't the optimal build, because you can up your mirrors with stuff like this. Like nothing, nothing else can go in the uh, bridge except for these six things, as far as I'm aware. So, uh, yeah, you can just use those. Okay. I don't... I think I know where we can go for that one. And that would be east of, like, Polythrene. Um, by at least a full chunk. So, okay. So, we need to go to... Alright, so we're full. Okay. And manually save. We need to go to Adam's way. So, so I think I mentioned a while back columns, and these are the columns. See these lines? These are the columns. I used to na naively think that um, it was just that the things in each column, the islands, would switch with each other. But actually, the places where they can be are weirder shapes, weirder, like, tetrominoes <laughs> uh, that are shaped in different ways. Like, if I recall, this is, there's, like, an L shape of where certain islands can be, uh, and so on and so forth. So I know, like, the Chelinate, which was mentioned, is can be somewhere over here. Um, there's, like, a... A chunk here, a P-shaped chunk, uh, which is starts with Godfall and has polythreme, so that's why I knew polythreme was in the vicinity. So that's pretty cool. Um, so all of these. It took forever to find Pigmoat Isle because I hadn't look through much of this area which is where it can be in my other save where I went and looked at what happens if you win and uh, and so I think I found it like over here like as far away from stuff I discovered as possible um, okay so we have all that the autumn islands the mangrove college. So that's where the mangrove college was. And I need to go, I think, let's see, I think it's four in, so it's like one, two, three, four. So I believe Adam's way is roughly over here. So I need to go all the way over and then hopefully make it all the way back in some way. Either that way or... Oh, it'd be nice if I could do that and get back to part, poor Carnelian because I might be able to get my submarine. Okay. So I think I already saved. I'm going to manually save again because I'm nervous. And we're going to look because I don't trust anything. We don't have any more port reports that I left behind. Oh... Okay. So, I'm not going to make a lot of money on this trip, I don't think, unless I'm very lucky. Uh, I don't remember if dumping the Sphinx Stone helps very much. It'll be quite the trip. I 
I guess I'll stop here just to get a port report. Trees underneath are scraggly and wretched, scraping living with parasynthesis. But the apples of Mutton Island are tart and powerful, perfect for Zyder. Zyder? Cider! This stuff is stronger than it looks. You stretch out in your seat, stare through the leaded window at your safely moored ship, and find yourself whistling. Landlord gives you a friendly grin and goes back to wetting his cleaver. Wow, that was not worth it. That was a waste of my time. I am disappointed. Uh, I'm going to keep going. God, it's pitch dark in this fog. It's like we're in an undersea cave or something. An underground cave or something. ship Well, I don't know. It's going to reduce like one terror. It's never helpful. I'm bitter. What's that? Well, okay. Guider's Morn is over there, presumably. Ooh. That's cool. We're going to see Visage. I'm going to crash right into Visage. safe. Huh. Kapalka Cove. 
This is the port of visage where faces may not be naked, except one, a stone monument the size of a village church, serenely gazing upwards, called Flourishing of Years. Very awesome. The departing merchant gives you a confused account of crocodiles and honey cakes and something about ear blockage? To this, you add your own impressions about the street layout close to port and the types of commerce here. When the lights are especially bright, it is possible to make out the details of the profile of that great stone face. Nice. Okay. So this is the place that's based on a Jack Vance story, novella, uh, the, the Moon Moth, um, which is about a society on a planet where um, you have to wear a mask. The mask is your face and identity. Whatever's behind is uh, sort of like shameful and horrifying. You don't dare show it. You, who you are is who your mask is and they wouldn't understand if uh, you said no that's the same guy he's just wearing a different mask they'd be like no that's th that doesn't make sense it's the mask that are the people not the human beings themselves no Didn't expect to hear a voice sing along part of the melody. Um, the person who paid to make this place, uh, the, the, the backer, um, like they didn't make it. They, I assume that they just said, hey, how about a place like the Moon Moth where you have to wear a mask? Um, and that's about their input. Now I believe they work for fa uh, the Fallen London staff. I think they got hired on as a writer later. I may be wrong about that, but one of the people, uh, I, who, uh, either the person who made Nuncio, or the person who made Visage, or it was the same person who did both, um, I believe is now, because I, I read their blog, because they wrote about lore and stuff, and they're like, well, uh, I have to stop doing this because I got hired on, and I'm, I'm now going to be part of the lore, and I thought that was just pretty cool. Anyway. All those who enter must play their parts. The sign is visible only after you've crossed the threshold. On the lower slopes, stone buildings, flat roofs, archways. In the architecture, there lingers a memory of lotus and palm frond. The hill above is a face, forever looking up at the ceiling of the Untersee. No one inhabits his cheeks or the hollows of his eyes. All visitors must pass one by one through a room guarded by a person in the mask of a moon moth. Okay. Um, that, I don't know what happens. I assume you get in trouble. Ooh, frog mask. Voracious, threatening. Okay. Uh, where's that? Okay. Moon moth explains. Each mask declares a different intention towards the denizens of visage. It must be accompanied by suitable behavior. The frog is for visitors who, though perhaps clumsy and unfamiliar with local etiquette, have come in order to observe local ways and to make uncouth comments about them. The locust is for those who seek profit in visage and would carry away as many goods as possible. You prompt about the bat. Moon Moth hesitates. Bat is an ill-omened visitor, sent as a messenger or a spy. Bat always dies. Good thing you check in on that before. Um, it sounds like if you're going to be a tourist who's a fuck-up, you might as well advertise the fact. Besides, frogs are uh, the best. And I'm not really seeking to profit from this place or die. So, Brekekekek. Nice. Moon Moth lifts the mask and places it over your head. The eye holes are large and they are fitted with spectacles. These improve your view of the environment, though you must look bull-eyed from the outside. There's also a mechanism attached to the mouthpiece, the mouthpiece, which magnifies any sounds you make, even your breathing. You start to thank the moon moth, and it comes out as a booming croak. May you profit from your visited knowledge, says moon moth. 
Its wings fold neatly over its back. Nice. Hmm. All right. So I'll do... I'll just go top down. Stoop at the lintel, enter the dark. A room of heavy stone, guarded by a golden statuette of a woman with outstretched arms. The scroll niches, sorted to correspond to a variety of masks. A jackal in the lioness, the crocodile, and dung beetle. A woman in the mask of a lotus blossom is standing at a lectern, reading in silence. Ooh. Moon Moth stands to one side as your escort and tour guide. I do like the bumbling way. It's like, you do need to do that. Um, so I'll ask. Moonmoth explains, people think it means something like library of fragments, but this is wrong. The parts in question are like parts in a play. This is where the denizens of Visage come in order to learn how to perform their mass more accurately, more completely, with a truer spirit. Well, this is very in character then. Taking out Taking the nearest, you read it aloud, for guarding against the loss of the heart. Moon Moth takes it from you, rolls it tightly, and returns it to its niche. There are as many ways of guarding against the loss of the heart as there are different masks, it explains, in that same light and indifferent voice. Well, but I was I was very bumbling. I'll move on to the next one. The flood court is a long stone room with two ranks of columns on each side. Currently, the court is ankle-deep in water. The water stains on the stone show that the flood has often reached higher, sometimes up to the height of your waist. In a raised niche at the far end of the room sits a statue of a man with the head of a ram. He holds a jar from which water flows out onto the floor. Someone, the same person, wrote all of these areas because they keep saying the word niche, and I have noticed it. Okay. I like that. <laughs> I like how the options are in keeping with the mask. It might be sort of fun to sort of, you know, act out of character. I guess it would be something like that. Oh, I can't do that now. Hmm, perhaps I'll be able to come back another time and you start off at zero again. Or I might have to do another mask in order to do it. In any case... From a corner, Moon Moth picks up a graduated stick. He shows you how a per Ooh, it's he now instead of it. Uh, he shows you how a person standing at the end of the room may dip the stick into the water and use it to measure the water level at a pre-selected point, and how the measurements are compared with measurements written on a calendar. If the water level does not match the calendrical position, an assembly of pipes and drains is used to adjust it. It used to be, says the moth, that the water rose and fell of its own accord, and the people before wrote down what height it reached. Now the water is still, but thanks to their actions, we can replicate the rise and fall so as to still be pleasing to the god of flood. It completes this... It, again. It completes this explanation with a half-body bow towards the statue of the ram deity. Hmm... Why not? You explain at how you exclaim at how much you admire this room and its excellent pool. Your words are as always amplified into a croak. Other masks turn towards you: crocodile, lotus blossom, crescent moon. No one speaks. You have garnered a suitable degree of disdain. <laughs> Blue moth quietly applauds your performance of froghood. Okay, so now I can leave if I. So desire. So I've done that. I'll try this. Moonmoth is startled. Apparently no other frog has gone so far as to attempt to deface the library's holdings. It gets the pen away from you, expostulating. 
Later, you find it writing down a record of what you just did, to be added to the library of parts, a recollection of what can be expected from frogs. I love that. Ooh. Intriguing. It is king to go. It draws you aside into a closet in the customs house. Had enough of visage, it tells you frankly. Here, you take my mask and pretend to be me. And I will trade in the visitor mask and go on some departing ship. Get my life back. Its face. No, now you see her face. Is aging but unlined. A lifetime of never needing to use a facial expression. Intriguing. Hmm... Come back. Okay, so these are all between four and six. Okay. So I'll visit this fellow. Each morning, the man in the cobra mask draws lines in the mud flat with a pointed steel rod. This apportions to each inhabitant a small trapezoidal area from which to harvest mushrooms and to scrape salt. No plot is ever preserved from one day to the next. This man is the chief geometer, the keeper of directions, master of land measures, and sea measures. Hmm. So, this place feels Egyptish. Um, I don't know which city that corresponds to. If you're going traditional, then it's like... One was Babylonian. I keep saying Babylonian. It was Mesopotamian. Uh, two perhaps was Egyptian, and then three, three perhaps was something, I'm not sure. I would have thought Mesoamerican. Now you have been invited to his home, at the time customarily appointed for him to receive those who are not his equal in rank, yet not so far beneath him as to deserve to be ignored. What ceremonial gift will you bring? Hmm. I am not sure. Genuinely. These are all our intriguing options. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm gonna have to think. I don't believe... I feel like String of Rats is probably dumb. Um... I don't I'm thinking too hard about this Genuinely unsure. I... I'm supposed to know about... So... String of rats, no. Maybe... The beads? Um... I do like the idea, but... I don't think that fits the role either. Um, this one definitely isn't good because 
Like, you don't... The mask is the face, not whatever is behind it. That's definitely not... Huh. If I had candles, that would have been smart, perhaps. Uh, kind of like this one, but I think this one is maybe more likely to be successful. Um, I will do this one. I'm sorry I took so long, but... Yeah, I'll do this. Well... Meanie Miney, come on, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. My mother told... Fish. Okay. He gives them to a servant with orders that they be crow. Oh, no. And the powder made into a pigment, and the pigment used for painting. It is uncertain whether this is a deadly insult. Oh, dear. I'm not sure that worked out. So there's the Temple of Apis. So, okay, so this is definitely... Egyptian. Egyptian. Should I go with this one? If I, am I in good favor? I don't know. Uh, I'll go. Mm. I'll go here, because the face is pretty mysterious. You must, of course, wait until your work with this day's crop of frogs and locusts is complete. It would not be suitable to bring them along, of course. Up on the hillside, the building becomes scarcer and then vanish entirely, leaving you looking at the bottom of Great Chin. Oh, no. Um, that's too low. I kind of like that, but I'm intrigued about this one. You contemplate the line for some time. There is an arithmetic sequence to the count of bows that it performs to each feature. The eyes, the nose, each lip. It's hard to know whether the lion is meant to be her worshipper or her lover. Perhaps the two functions are not very distinct. When at last the lion's bows are complete, it passes you with a little slight snap of its masked jaws. It was rude of you to stand there watching. The moth watches visitors. It does not watch citizens. To do so has violated the strictures of both of your roles. Oh no! I'm a fool. A fool, eh? Well, I'll go here. I'll try and see a little of everything. The wounded god. In the center of the temple is a black bull with a white diamond on its face. It is tied in place with heavy ropes, and it is wounded in the thigh. From this wound, it bleeds copiously without dying. Uh-oh. No more than five. Okay, well I have this one. That's not very moth-like. I feel like that is what a bat would do, and I would get in trouble. Okay. The tokens are small and not very valuable, as suits your lower rank in the community. The priest arranged them on a table with other small items. As you go out, you pass by the more impressive gifts, drafting tools from the chief geometer, scales from the jackal, a heap of foreign coin brought home by crocodile, Okay, so there are higher rolls. Ooh. This may conclude my current visit. I think it probably will. Okay. It is a festival day. The great stone face has been illuminated from forehead to chin with blazing torches so that the profile is visible from the side more clearly than you have ever seen it. Flourishing of years is awake, says the genderless figure in the crocodile mask. Hmm. Ooh. All the denizens of visage are walking towards the ear together. There is a place in the procession which belongs by right to the wearer of your mask. I would like to do this one. 
You go as though you were truly one of them. You carry nothing with you but your mask and your costume. May your heart be as light as a feather, says the woman in the lotus blossom mask, as you fall into line behind her. The road you follow leads up through switchbacks along the side of the face, and finally to the ear of flourishing of years, and into the cave that is her ear. The tunnel bends back on itself, and all lights have now been extinguished. There is nothing to guide you but the hand of the person behind you on your back, and the movement of the person in front of you. The one who walks beside you wears a back mask. Uh Uh-oh. Fortunately, the floor of the tunnel is very smooth and presents no stumbling blocks. Sound carries strangely in this place, however. Sometimes you cannot hear your own footsteps, and sometimes a breath comes back to you audible from someplace ahead in line. There is a secret in the dark. The footsteps of the people are steady and synchronized, and you go together. For how many years has this been done, and for how many will it be done in the future? Watch your step here, says Bat Mass to you in an undervoice. Its accent is the accent of Wolfstack Docks. Four is about to get squishier. And sure enough, it does. So he's done this before. At last, the tunnel opens out. You and all the other congregants spread out in a cavernous space. A voice speaks in the darkness, a ritual preparation. Here, at the new year, we gather under the one mask of flourishing of years. Her face is turned to the gods. Protected by her mask, we may remove our own. Protected by her script, we may speak outside our parts. Here and there is the sound of people fumbling with ties and strings. Your own face feels different with the mask off. Ooh. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'll just do this one. In the deep shadow, you hear things that you will never repeat. They are not the most dreadful secrets or the most evil things you know, but they are entrusted to you as confessions. You needn't guard your face while you listen, because no one can see you. You need not scheme about how to use information, because you do not know whose secret this is. It has no use to you, except as a token of connection. Oh, dang. The hour of confidence is drawing to its end. If there is anything else you need to do, now is the time. Oh, man. I feel like I didn't get enough out of this, but you can only do so much. At the end of the hour, there comes a woman with a feather of shimmering silver, which she tucks into your hand symbol of the innocent heart that will not be eaten by the jackal. Then a bell rings, and the time of speech is is over. You all begin to put your mask back on. It is possible, you cannot know for sure, that in this cover someone has exchanged a mask with someone else. It is an orderly and perfect line that emerges again from the era of flourishing of years. If anyone watches from above, they must surely be satisfied. Hmm. Alright. When the other citizens are distracted, you find your way to the familiar customs house and rid yourself of mask and robe. There is satisfaction in laying aside a role well performed. Nice. Alright, so you can't go in. No shops. Ah, that's a fun little story. And then, presumably, I can come again and try a slightly different route, see how it goes. Uh, hopefully, anyway. Okay. So. I believe it's down here. So I still need to keep going southeast. Forever southeast. And of course, they're going to be right there. Hassling me. <sighs> OK. 
God, I hate them. Dang it. Ooh, where's this? Poor Cavendish. Huh. It's the Isle of Cats. Okay, I know I have to come here for my my little goal. A scatter of yellow-lit honey dens and brightly painted alehouses. To the southeast rises the stone tower of Cavendish Abbey, its ramparts hung with crimson and gold banners. There are sailors from all across the Neath hauling cargo, dicing and brawling good-naturedly on the docks. The air carries the sound of zee shanties, sung with more enthusiasm than skill, and the smell of roses edged with brimstone. Okay... All right. First of all, I'm going to do this. This does not mean that the Admiralty lacks interest in their activities. You spend half a day observing the docks and note an astonishing number and variety of ships. Was that a conate trimaran nestled beside a vessel from the Iron Republic? The dock hands complain loudly that they have never been busier. The catties talk ceaselessly and carelessly about smuggling and piracy. But even the most hardened sailors lower their voices when they mention the king. They go even quieter when they talk about the rose garden. You make careful notes. Perhaps the admiralty will understand what they mean, even if you don't. Alright. Isery, cat's chiefest claw. The reports are all the same. Isery manages the honeyed tongue, a den of exceedingly select and debased pleasures. You'll have to win their favor if you were to taste the honey. Hmm. traditional 10 bucks more than it ought to be but that's not shabby considering how far we are from home manual save and I may leave it there for now because my voice is going it was rough alright have a good one